All right, we're gonna set up a telescope here for astrophotography. Um, you can see over here I've got my uh, semi-permanent setup here. This is where I do my astrophotography from Scotts Valley. So this is a Orion HDX 110, uh, also known as the EQ8. It can handle a 110 pound payload. I've got my water cooled, water cooling for my DSLR, don't worry about that. You know, all my electronics and power supplies and stuff are here. And we've got the wiring harness and the water. Again, don't worry about that for the DSLR. All here um, in such a way that it minimizes vibration and tugging and such, such not. Cameras inside this bag. You can see this is a temperature sensor. The camera's in there with uh, water blocks to cool the camera itself. And then there's also a radiator here with a fan to cool the air inside the camera bag. And that prevents condensation. Filter wheel, focuser, 8-inch Richie Crichton, or however it's pronounced in French, uh, astrograph. This is my auto-guiding camera, QHY CCD uh, is the company. It's equivalent to the Orion Starshoot Auto Guider Pro. Um, I wanted the non-Orion version so I could get uh, video drivers. The Orion version doesn't have video. This is a 500 millimeter mirror lens. It gets me a little closer to the focal length. I'm shooting at uh, 12,003 millimeters with the focal reducer that's buried in here with the camera. So 500 millimeters a little closer to that than like a 50 millimeter finder scope. Okay, so that's the big rig. But uh, what we're going to do here is set up uh, uh, my portable rig. Uh, so it's a, a 6 inch version of that same scope and an Orion Sirius mount. It's not quite big enough for this amount of payload, but... Uh, works good enough for for demo purposes so some of the things we're going to need here you're going to need a compass with the ability to offset for the uh, true north versus magnetic north you're going to need uh, a couple different types of levels and we've got the camera here and power supply stuff we've got the pieces of the mount We've got the telescope, and the auto guiding rig is on there, and uh, we've got our wiring harness for that. We've got a battery here. This is a 35 amp hour AGM. It's a glass mat uh, deep cycle. So those are all attributes, you know, that you want in a good battery: the AGM, the deep cycle. Um, I like the smaller 35 amp hour ones because then I don't hurt myself trying to carry them around. And uh, I just I have a couple of these that I use. Uh, and then I wired it uh, with an on off switch and a volt ammeter. And then this is uh, so that if I have multiple batteries I can connect the grounds together, which is important. And that all the outputs are fused. And I have these cigarette lighter things I do not recommend use for anything. Uh, they're very flaky, um, but this is basically on here just in case somebody needs a, to plug in that way. I normally use this style DC connector, and then what I've just gone to for, 
for if I need to go long runs with thick wire, I'm using these trailer style uh, SAE connectors. So anywhere I used to have cigarette lighters, I'm going to switch to these things, which are, you know, almost too hard to get apart, but very reliable compared to this. You, you know, breathe on these and they glitch everything. So while we're here, here's my... Now this wiring harness is, is very much overcomplicated for just the DSLR astrophotography because it has a bunch of stuff for the for video astrophotography as well for the Malin cam. So for instance, this is a you know a video to USB encoder. Obviously you don't need that for the DSLR. And uh, there's a second um, USB to serial connector adapter here to run the Malin cam. You don't need that. But you know there's a USB hub and there's a couple DC to DC converters. So one of these, this one's 12 volts to 7.5 uh, with 3 amps. And that's for the camera, Canon cameras around 7.5, 7.8 volts. So that's handy. So 12 volts in, 7.5 volts out. And then there's a 5 volt one here for the USB port. 12 volts in, 5 volts out, runs the USB port, the USB hub, I should say. Um, now I'm, when I'm doing redoing some of this with metal hubs and, and I'm buying hubs that have 12 volts in so I can eliminate that one that one piece there. Uh, you might also, oh let's see, and then there's this USB to RS-232 is for the mount. You can get cables, this, this will end up plugging into the handset on the mount. Uh, you can get cables that go directly to the mount without going into the handset, which I recommend uh, from Shoestring Astronomy. This was just my, my old rig before. I have that on that rig. I have that cable, but this is my old cable here. Uh, you might also have a focus controller, USB to focus controller in here if you had a, a focus unit. So this is just my little box with the DC input, USB out and then the wires that go off to the to the mount. So let's go ahead and get started with putting the mount together. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is aim the north leg of the mount to true north. Normally your mount is going to have some kind of labeling or something on this, I don't know, I bought this mount used, so I don't know if that's a stock feature or not, but for the Sirius and Atlas mounts, this uh, piece of metal here for the azimuth knobs to push against is going to indicate which one is north. On this mount, that's in the back, so it's actually on the opposite side facing south. And so you just need to know for your mount which leg is supposed to point north. So this compass, there's a little black line here I put with marker uh, where I figured out by looking at uh, topo maps or an online resource, you know, what is the offset between true north and magnetic north for my observing location. So the way this compass works is you take this and point your, your offset at this arrow here and then you just, you know, align your, your compass to that arrow and then this arrow is now true north. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for is watch what happens as I come over here. Um, you see that offset there? So all of this metal uh, can affect your compass. So um, this doesn't seem to be too bad here, 
but if the mount head you know had some magnets in it if the mount head is on there it'll definitely mess it up so I try to you know be some distance away so looks like we've got we've already I've already positioned this uh, pointing towards true north now the other thing I want to point out is you know you'll see this mount is down low it's down as low as it can go right because there's no here there's no uh, extension showing and those are showing because they're lower down so this is as low as this thing can go here so if you were doing visual you'd want it up high so it's comfortable to look in the scope but for astrophotography we're going to put it as low as we can to minimize any wobble in the tripod so let's go ahead and continue with assembling things i'm going to need this level next so we can pop that right in there at least until well look at that yeah let me let me go ahead and well actually i'm gonna level this first i guess so I am going to raise it up on that side just a little bit because I can tell that's a one leg adjustment to do that. A little bit more. And some parallax there. Looking straight down. Yep, perfect. Tighten things up. Now we're going to Put this in. 